Hey, the Church of England has started a project beginning in the spring of 2023 here, which will consider modifying statements like Our Father, the prayer Our Father who is in heaven, using non-sex specific pronouns in place of what we find in the Bible. So the Church of England has a liturgical commission, and they're going to work together with what a group they have called the Faith and Order Commission to start a joint project on this, again here, just starting in a few months. So the Church of England is holding an important meetings this week, and they're going to be considering whether the church will give its approval to certain liturgies uh, that would bless uh, same-sex unions or marriages. And that's going to, we'll find out more about that later this week. This business here came up when a clergy person named Joanna Stobart, she's vicar in the Diocese of Guilford, Surrey, she said that some clergy want to refer to God, she said, without saying he or him in prayers of forgiveness for sins. Stobart asked this question, quote, Please, could the Liturgical Commission provide an update on the steps being taken to develop more inclusive language in our authorized liturgy and to provide more options for those who wish to use authorized liturgy and speak to God and speak of God in a non-gendered way, particularly in authorized absolutions where many of the prayers offered for use refer to God using male pronouns, unquote. So supposedly the use of male pronouns to refer to God who is spirit and who pre-exists sex and who designed the male and female sex, uh, somehow it's confusing and somehow it contributes to hurt feelings in women and in persons who are experiencing homosexuality or so-called transgendered identity. So anyway, the question arises then, well, why should we, I'm, I'm not Church of England, I'm, I'm a different church, why should we care what the Church of England says or does? Well, and the reason why we would be concerned is because developments like this are injected into the news stream by people who want to push a certain new viewpoint on reality. And they, they are put out there very intentionally to change thought about human sexuality. So yeah, that's, that's important. Somebody's trying to shape our thought on these points in a way that is not biblical. So we should be aware and alert. Is that complicated? When the church itself departs from the Bible, it becomes a morally corrosive agent. It becomes part of the present, nauseous, all-permeating cultural solvent. Now, let me read what it, the church spokesperson said. Quote, There are absolutely no plans to abolish or substantially revise currently authorized liturgies, and no such changes could be made without extensive legislation. Unquote. Well, no, there, there are no current final plans. Uh, this, but but the ball is rolling now, isn't it? You guys have started the ball rolling, and so, so yeah. Like you know, who do you think you're fooling? Recently, I read an on-point uh, comment by by Francis Schaeffer. This is from his brilliant 1968 book, The God Who Was There, and I was probably six years old when he wrote this. But listen to what he says on this point. He wrote this. In much of modern thinking, all antithesis and all the order of God's creation is to be fought against, including the male-female distinctions. This is part of the world spirit of the generation which surrounds us. It is imperative that Christians realize the conclusions which are being drawn as a result of the death of absolutes. Unquote. So now in the 2020s, when the world needs the truth of God, which is the truth of the real world, the actual world we live in, not the ephemeral, pseudo-real, fake world human and supernatural powers are constructing for us. Just now, so many churches are more like uh, witches standing around the cauldron, tossing in, you know, some eye of nude and some frog entrails into the cauldron, into the golden cup of abomination that makes the whole world drunk, according to the book of Revelation. Let the blind lead the blind, and for you and I, let's, let's go back to the Bible.